Hey you guys, so today I'm going to give you another Mac tutorial how to make a basic web browser through Xcode and Interface Builder. Um, if you are interested in doing this, you're going to have to download the SDK from Apple. So just Google um, Apple iPhone SDK. And it's also for the iPhone, you can build apps with Interface Builder and Xcode for Mac and iPhone. So it all comes together. So first things first, let's just open up Xcode. And then we're going to go to create a new Xcode project. And you're going to select Mac OS X under that application, Coco application, and then click choose. Let's just name this web browser. So I'm just going to save it in my folder. And then click save. All right. So you're going to see um, a lot of files right here. Um, we're going to go to resources, double click main menu dot zip. You can downsize this for right now. All right, so I'll just move that up there and let's make this like this big just for a test run. Um, we're not going to need help, so we can just delete that, delete, delete, delete. Um, just put, just keep file. Yeah, all you need is file. No one really cares about the taskbar up there anyway. Um, so this is what it is so far. You're just going to have this stuff. So don't worry about that. Just move that up. All right. So once you have your blank layout, you're going to want to go into your library and then look for under library web view. So let's put a web view. Make it so it's even on both sides right there. And give it give it a little bit of space up there. All right. So now as you can see Everything's even on all the sides. Okay, so now you're going to want to scroll up until you get to right here under Library, Coco, Views and Cells, Inputs and Values. You're going to get the text field. Let's take a text field and let's make it a good portion of size. I guess until like right there. Because we're going to need some space for the buttons that we're going to be importing. And yeah, let's just even that out. Next thing you're going to need is a button. So let's get you know, a button for the back button. So let's just use um, how we use this one the round textured button. And let's just make this blank. And then we'll make this about that big or a little bit smaller. So to get the other button the exact same size, click on it and then click Command C. And then paste it and then click Command V. So let's move that decent amount of. Change the size of it. And if you messed up on the size, then you can just click on it and put it over the other one so that's the same size. Right? So let's just keep these, just make them nice and aligned. Alright, so that's good. And then uh, let's paste two more of them. So Command V, Command V, Command V. Or th yeah, three more, my bad. So just drag all of them over to the other side. Yeah, we don't need the third one. So just two on the other side, too. Alright, so even them all out so it's all like this. Alright, so then you click on it and then go to Image and then you're going to look for Left Facing Triangle. It's kind of hard to find it here. It's going to be NS. It's going to be an NS. So, oh, there, I just saw it. Left Facing Triangle. Then you want to click on this one, and you're going to go to NS Right Facing Triangle. Scroll down. It should be right here. Okay. So let's just save that really quick. And for this one, you're going to go to Image, and it's going to be NS Refresh Template. And for this one, it's going to be NS Stop Progress Template. All right. So now we have all of our buttons. And for this, you're just going to type in HTTP dot dot slash slash because when you're using your browser, it's going to automatically um, direct you to that page. All right. So before we go on, we're going to want to go into Xcode and select under Groups and Files, Web Browser, right-click it, Add Existing Frameworks. And then we're going to select Frameworks, scroll all the way down to WebKit.Framework, and click Add. 
and then you could save if you want. Then we can downsize Xcode and go back in the interface builder. So now on your keyboard, you're going to want to go click Control and then drag this, and then you're going to go back to receive the action. And you want to click Go Forward, and then for this, you're going to drag that, and you want to click Take String URL from. For this, it's going to be Reload Code Memory. Just click Control Z. So this and reload, and this is going to be stop loading. Okay, so let's just save that, because I like to save a lot, just in case you never know what could happen with your computer. Um, so now you can make the background whatever you want it to be. Um, if you, you just select this up here, click the title bar, and you can select textured, not textured, you can have a shadow, or not shadow, so let's just put a shadow. Um, the title is whatever you want, so... save it and then let's go into Xcode and click build and run this is gonna save it and build well it doesn't save it it builds it it puts all your frameworks and everything together and it runs it so this is what your, your web browser look like if somebody were to open it let's just go to google.com click enter and here you go so here's the page and if, yeah, let's go to another page under images, so then click back, goes back to web images really fast. You refresh the page, you click it a lot, you'll see the Google logo. Google logo disappears. So forward, back, forward, back, and it's really fast because it doesn't really have a cache or a history. So if you're done using it, just click Command Q on your keyboard, it'll just close it out. You can stop loading a page, refresh it. You can Google search anything. Um, it has the links under. All this, so and it might be kind of laggy, yeah, because I'm making the. So you're we're gonna make this bigger. You can make it bigger eventually. So this is just um, the way that I made it right now for you guys. So uh, there's another cool thing actually. Uh, if you click on the arrows, there is a way that you can yeah here it is. You can put a sound. For one of my browsers, I put a popping sound. I put pop. And I don't know what that is, but we'll test that. So let's build that and run. And I'll show you an example of it. I got a little page burst. Oh, that's weird. It doesn't make a sound. But usually when you click on it, it'll make a sound and. Must be only a couple sounds. Oh, I have to save it, my bad. So now let's just test that and see how that is. So it gives you a sound when you click the buttons if you want that to. Um, I'm just going to take that sound out. I don't feel like having that in. So I'll just test that. And you can save it. Um, if for file, if you don't you don't really need any of these, it's not gonna really matter. So we could just do back, just in case. Like I don't understand why you would have this. Just sometimes people like to do things the complex way. I think I need the arrow. I'll take that out. We can keep the print. So, print, we can, should be able to connect that. And just select that for print. Um, and we'll just connect these how they're already connected. Like reload, stop, stop loading, forward, forward, back, back. Make sure these are still connected. So let's just see. Make sure you always save it and test and run and build and run by the. So make sure you always build and run it. Just in case, you know, we make sure everything works. And then, or you can just use this and go back. But it's pretty stupid doing that. Um, you can print it too. So just go to file. 
Well, you can also do that to print it. So just click print, and it'll select this. You can make this bigger. Um, click like select how you want it. You can click preview, and that'll it only gets like half the page because it's been selected. So and preview, and so there. That's how you make a basic web browser in Interface Builder. Thank